All right, welcome back. We got a nice little intro from uh, Mr. Baldwin um, for our topic, how to identify igneous rocks by minerals they contain. And I'm Mr. Ben. I'm Jasmine. I'm Chiza. All right. Well, you've seen them, but you haven't seen me in this clip uh, or these clips yet. But today we're going to talk about really how to identify our igneous rocks using the minerals that we already learned about. And then we'll look at how using the, um, the chart that's in the lab manual really does help. So ladies, uh, do you see any minerals over there that look familiar like from the last unit? My favorite. Ooh, what is it? Oh, your favorite mineral. <laughs> but I like it. Is it muscovite? <laughs> it, it, excellent. Nice. Can you find the place where he would go? All right. Is there another one over there? Okay. Now, he's got a brother. Um, you know, they're like stepbrothers um, who has the very similar characteristics, but he's one plane of cleavage, but he's really dark. Yeah. Find his, yep. That's his brother. So we've got muscovite mica and biotite mica. So they got the same last name, um, but you know, um, they're, they, they're named basically, like we learned before, based on different characteristics they have. Now these minerals show up oftentimes in our igneous rocks. So take a look at those igneous rocks, see if you can find one that you think might have some black spots in it like the biotite. That one's really dark and there's a good chance it might be in there. Um, let's look at one of the other ones that might have a dark one. Is it this? That one's really dark. So when they're all dark, it's really hard to tell one dark mineral from another. What about this big boy here? Could that one have some Whoa. dark, flat minerals in it? Perhaps. Maybe, yeah. Right. Well, if we get magnifying glasses out, you might be able to see um, some of those dark minerals in it. And if you um, use the lab manual itself, you what you'll see is that the depending on how many of those minerals you have, you can, it'll kind of help you identify who's who. So the biotite is just this little wedge right here. So you're not going to expect to see too many or too much biotite actually in the igneous rocks. But if you find it, pretty much it's going to be in this category right here. You're going to be um, either a felsic or an intermediate rock if you have the biotite in it. Can you find another dark mineral over there um, that... Um, mm -hmm. That one's the amphibole. Do you remember the, it reminds me of the cow's horns, the way it forms, and that's how it reminds me of its name. Remember what it's called? Cow's horn? Um. How's a cow tell another cow to get out of the way? He uses his horn. Horn blend? Right? You, you tell somebody to get out of your way in the car by using horn blend, okay. or by using your horn. Cows do the same thing. Okay, and then over there we've got a little collection of, there's two minerals. One is pyroxene, it looks a lot like hornblende, and the other one is olivine. The one that's just kind of green is olivine, the, um, and the smaller one right there is the pyroxene. You can put them in that group over there. Those minerals are really, if you look on the chart, you're going to find them oftentimes, um, you're going to find them in the rocks, but you're not really going to be able to spot the individual, you know, crystals. You were talking about how big the crystals get. Um, and these form, you know, under extremely high temperatures, and then they cool usually too quickly to form big crystals. Now, the other ones, like the light-colored minerals, they often stick around long enough to cool a long time. But as you learned in the last group, these guys right here tend to have really high melting points. And as soon as the magma drops the temperature a little bit, they stop making those big crystals and they change over. So those you're not going to find in big crystals kind of like the other ones, but you are going to find them basically coloring the rock. Like this rock, would you say it's kind of that color? Mm. Sort of. Sort of? Yeah, well, the rust is actually an excellent observation. Guess what mineral or guess what metal rusts? It's Fe from the chart? Iron? Iron, exactly. And these are, and we're going to talk about it later on, these are the some of the felsic minerals. And you spotted them because they have iron in them and like this one melts. This one's been weathered a little bit. But basically it has a lot of those dark minerals. This one right here, um, uh, very dark. Um, so you're going to have some of those minerals, but you can't see the individual crystals in them. What about this guy here? Do you think that one could have some of those olivine and pyroxenes in it? Some of the darks? Yeah. 
Yeah. And see, what's neat is if you look at this chart right here, if you look at the ratio of light to dark, um, you know, like this guy right here, the um, you're talking about this rock, he's in this MAFA category where he has a little bit of light and then he's pretty much dark. But this guy that is almost all green, you'll notice, if you're almost all green, which is this guy, you know, you're going to be in this group kind of the, towards the, ap, um, the ultramafic. Now intermediate, that's going to be something that's kind of half light and half dark. Can you find a big rock over there which you think might be intermediate? Yeah, kind of like an Oreo blizzard. It kind of looks like to me. It makes me hungry. I'm hungry too. <laughs> yeah. Can you find um, some rocks over there or minerals that might be the light colored ones that might be in that um, the intermediate rock? Is it like I, I think those are great. Um, we've got two different kind of feldspars. One of the feldspars is the pink one that goes in this granite, and one of the feldspars is the feldspar that's going to wind up in this rock. Now, the, you've got the sodium and the calcium plagioclase feldspar. Those are the white ones that you picked out. So you can kind of put them in that group. And these guys, the, um, the potassium feldspar, the orthoclase feldspar, those are more the pinkish ones. They're the salmon color. So now if you look um, at the big chart again, you'll see if it's got the pink mineral in it right here. It's got the plagioclase um, or the orthoclase feldspar, the potassium feldspar, that's going to help tell you it's probably one of these rocks right here. Now, the white colored one, that's the plagioclase feldspar. Now, you're probably leaning more towards this part of the chart. So by being able to identify which minerals are in your rock, you're going to really be able to drop down here and be able to find out, most likely, which rock is which. Then you look at other characteristics like you learned, like is it... Um, Phanoretic, what did that mean, big or small crystals in the last group? Big? Yeah, I think a band, big. So, like, you're not a little fan. Like, if you like a band, like, what's your favorite band? Oh, I don't know. Justin Bieber. Yeah, I days love remember. That. Okay, one, one Direction. Okay, one you're direction. a big oh, fan. Yeah. So Fanoretic means big. You're not a little fan of One Direction. You're a fan. You're a big fan. Fanoretic. So big crystals. There you go. And then Amphanetic, I think of ants. They're really what? Little fans. Yeah, they're like little small things. So Amphanetic is little. So you can, once you find out Fanoretic or if you find out if Amphanetic and you know where it crosses here, it, you can identify them real easy that way. Okay, Quartz. Well, who's left? Davis. You got it. Now, you'll notice quartz is um, a different color. It can be pink, it can be white, it can be blue. And then once you get good at looking at them in the rocks, you'll see these tend to be the shiny minerals that show up in rocks like granite and other igneous rocks. The muscovites tend to not be maybe as shiny. They can be a little more gray um, oftentimes. The biotites and the amphibole or the horn blends it, they're going to be black, and if they're big pieces of it, sometimes the horn blends, you'll see kind of like the cow's horns, the big rectangular shapes to them. You'll be able to identify them um, in the big pieces of granite. Sometimes you can actually almost see the big um, orthoclase feldspar or the plagioclase feldspar chunks in them. So depending on what sample you have, using this chart right here, um, and then going from amphanetic means small or big? Small. And phanoretic means? Big, big. Yep, big. So you can use this chart right here and kind of like a, a graph or a grid, you can um, quickly figure out who's who in the box. So you'll be using these lab manuals to help you out along the way. Um, and all these things together help us figure out who's in the box. Do you guys even feel more confident now? Yeah. I feel very, very confident. You guys are going to rock this. Get it? Rock it? Yeah. All right. Well, what do you want to say to everybody out there? Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks for you. watching.